Hey, what is going on everyone? The Great Dansby here, and I know uh, a lot of people have been asking me over the past, I'm going to say, eight or nine months about the Net Doom Router, maybe a little longer than that, almost almost a year now actually, kind of back in uh, last December, December of 2014, and uh, people are asking me through direct messages and everything about Net Doom, is it worth it, is it, good, is it a good product and everything, and uh, what I have to say is yes, and I'll go through it with you guys to just to show you exactly what it is, it's... Um, the geo filter is the biggest thing on this. That's the thing that makes it the most unique. It does have a really good uh, uh, quality of service control, also, which is very easy for people to use. Much easier than uh, most routers. It's like a it's like a click and pull kind of deal. It makes everything really easy, except for people that aren't that uh, tech savvy. So I'm gonna go through it right here. I'm gonna show you what everything does. So here's the host filtering. I should probably really put my, uh, my PlayStation on right now. So you, you'll see what happens. I turn the PlayStation on. Stuff will pop up. But uh, pretty much what it is is that you select the home location. I'll zoom in. So I'll zoom in over here. I live in uh, New York. And you pretty much click a location of, of who you want to connect to. Okay? On uh, how, how far do you want it to go? So I have it set up to 773 kilometers. We can, put, we can show you in miles over here. Or 480 miles. That is about the area that I'm willing to connect to. I, when I usually I connect to games like this, depending on the game, to, uh, to be honest with you, Advanced Warfare doesn't play all that well for me, to be completely honest, and that's more or less because I, I don't have the DLC on the PS4 right now, and I only have one DLC and I'm really fragmented, so there's people all over the world joining, although I don't get put into lobbies that are overseas though, so this makes sure that I don't get put into lobbies that are overseas, but people that are overseas can still join my games. And whatnot. It doesn't do that, it doesn't prevent people from joining your game, but what it will do is prevent you from joining games that are outside of your circle. So, over here, this is the ping assist. So, sometimes there are servers or people that are, they kind of, uh, they're, they're not in the right place exactly, or sometimes, although location usually is a big factor with ping, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. There could be somebody that is, uh, far, a little further outside your filter that's pinging faster than someone that's even closer to you. Uh, these things don't the lines of the internet, they don't exactly always, they're not all so seamless, so it's not always like the person that's right next to you is going to be necessarily the, the, the lowest ping. So you can select this, like, well, I don't use this that often, but if I'm having trouble finding games, I'll usually throw it on. I usually set it to like 20 to 25 millisecond ping, and I usually find the game pretty quickly. Uh, it's only in Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2, this is probably where I've seen it work the best. Black Ops 2, the Geo Filter was, is, is absolutely amazing. The thing is, I don't play my Xbox 360 that much anymore, but when I have played it, it's, uh, Black Ops 2 plays... It's like a whole different game playing it with the, with the uh, Net Duma. It said Advanced Warfare definitely helps on the Xbox One, because I have all the DLC. Definitely helps more than, than I've seen on the PS4 that's already in fragmented playlists. But I'm going to throw on my, my PS4 right now really quickly. So as you can see, there are these two dots here. These are actually servers, and all the ones that are padlocked over here are servers that my filter is blocking. It's not going to let me connect to all these other dedicated servers in the country. And then if I, if I zoom out, you'll see the other ones in the world over here that it's going to prevent me from clicking to. So pretty much the way I have it set up is that I'm only going to be connecting to dedicated servers that are in this area of the country. So I hop on. So I'm not going to actually show you uh, the game because I honestly don't feel like playing Advanced Warfare right now, but I want to show you these are the servers that are popping up. So if I were to go in a game, you know, find game, standard, blah, 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 we'll hit, I'm hitting Team Deathmatch right now, and it should find me a game. See, right now, if you see over here, there's an there's a explanation point right there. It was blocking me from joining that server, but it is it allowed me to connect to a player over here. And now we'll see if the and this is the player I connected to, and the player is playing on this server. So now what I can do is I can actually do peer ping as well. The so peer ping it shows you it usually shows you the the everybody in the lobby. Sometimes it doesn't get everybody, but it shows you how what everybody is pinging towards you. I have to, I have to wait till the game to start. So here's one player that's coming in right here. So then we could actually ping the host, and this is the ping I'm getting to the host right now. It's uh, 20, 25 is what it looks like right now. Let me, let me click it again. It looks like it froze. But we'll see how that's uh, that's actually going. So another player is coming in, pinging. Okay, there's, there's 70. And, and one thing I, I've been able to notice about with Advanced Warfare. So here here's the ping graph here. 
This is, how, this is what I'm pinging towards the server. It's pinging at about 10 milliseconds, which is really good. It has it has spikes to 30, which kind of sucks a little bit. Uh, it's really not the biggest deal in the world, though. Um, but they are actually implementing an anti-jitter for the router very soon. It should be here, hopefully, in a few weeks. And uh, that's going to really help it out, to, to be honest with you. Well, at least I, I'm assuming it's, it's going to be a, a good thing. All right, so you've seen the peer pings. You've seen the, uh, the ping graph over here that's in-game. Showed you the filter. You can zoom in. You can do all these other things. This uh, button right here will bring you. Uh, it, it's like a little jump to get you to the next closest server. You're having trouble finding games. Uh, you could thumbs down player hosts, but honestly, in the Call of Duty now, you don't really see them too often. Although when I do get them and they're bad, I do thumbs them down. You there's a little uh, meter over here. See, it's a it's a dedicated server, so you can't actually raid a dedicated server. But if you didn't want it, you would uh, match it up with the deny or the allow. So. You don't, you don't want somebody, you rate them like, you know, a 1 or anything like that. You like them, you, you put them in that higher threshold. So, uh, Geofilter, this is the biggest thing for the Netduma router. This is the reason why I got it, but it's not the only reason why it's good. So, we're going to go over here to the Congestion Control. Congestion Control is a quality of service. So, you see, here's all of my... All my stuff that's connected to the internet. It's kind of uh, all down here right now because I just threw it up on the... Uh, on my on my PC and my PS4 because they were on so I did that but I also have the share access checked off so anything that my computer and my PS4 is not using any internet it's not using it will let, allow my other devices to use it you can you can also prioritize even further by you you click off share access so right now for example it's going to be 58% here, 25 here, 9 there, 1 there and these things won't get any internet so they don't advise you to do that but you can do that so there's two algorithms here. There's a preemptive algorithm and a reactive algorithm. Obviously, you set your bandwidth. So pretty much the reactive is if you have a higher speed connection. I'm going to say if you have over a 25 download. I mean, they. I think you could go reactive over 25, but especially if you things that are like 50 and above, definitely go to reactive. So it's pretty much like if you have any surging on your line, then it will go opposed to preemptive, which is good if you have congestion on your line normally and you have lower... Uh, lower bandwidth and you want to drop it down a little bit so you don't get like that buffer bloat and that causes a lot of lag and a lot of jitter when you're playing games and that helps a lot too and certain games honestly even though I have a pr I have pretty uh, good bandwidth I will drop it down to preemptive like the Black Ops 3 beta for example I dropped it down to preemptive and for some reason I ran it on like preemptive 80 down 80 download and I think it was like 53 upload and the game played beautif beautifully for me the majority of the time so it's a really easy QoS. You just drag. You don't have to type in bit rates and things like that. And uh, same thing with percentages here. You could, you also you can set your bandwidth to anything. You could to make it easier. Like you could set your bandwidth to 100 and 100. And uh, even though you don't have if you don't have speeds like that, and you know drop it down to 12, and you'll get 12. You you get 12 download. That's what you're capping it at. It's it's actually quite useful for gaming because to be honest, with you, you don't need that much. You don't need that much bandwidth for gaming. But fluctuating bandwidth isn't always the best thing, especially with people in the house. Okay, host analysis. This is for PC, so I'm not gonna have anything for you because I don't. I don't PC game. My computer is really not that powerful. Maybe when I get another one, I'll be able to. But this actually gives you the quality of the host, and it's really, really in detail. I wish I could show you more, but I, I, like I said, I don't. I don't PC game, so I really can't show you. This is the virtual private network. If uh, you guys like to stream and stuff, you want to do VPN services, you can do it straight through here. It works very nicely. Network monitor. Again, I have high bandwidth, so this really isn't a huge feature for people that have that have a huge bandwidth. But for people that have low bandwidth and you want to see what's eating up all your bandwidth when you're gaming and what what can you do to 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 make your experience better, like someone's you know using Netflix, you're like, eh, you don't need that much power. So you, then you'll go into your QoS and you'll drop them down a little bit, and you'll see here that they won't be using as much. So pretty much everything is color coordinated, so you can see what pieces of equipment are using a lot of bandwidth so you can drop them down so it's not affecting your gaming like I said for gaming you really don't need anything more than like a five download and like usually you don't even need a one upload you have you both those things in there you should be able to game just fine don't let people tell you differently that you need like these massive massive bandwidth to game because honestly it doesn't really help you the only way it will help you is if you have a lot of people sucking up bandwidth in the in the house internet diagnosis you could do a diagnosis test on your internet so let's see how usually I have exceptional and everything we'll run it We'll run it really quickly and see how it goes. Okay, you're gonna disable my internet really quickly. I'll uh, fast forward this just so you can see my uh, my results. It's 
So right now my jitter is a little, uh, it's good, it's not exceptional, ping exceptional, lag spikes exceptional, no packet loss. So it's letting you know how your system's going. And there are times where I didn't understand what the hell was going on, my bandwidth looked good and everything. I came here and I, and I had like poor jitter or poor spikes. I don't have my Verizon files anymore, unfortunately, and it's not available where I moved to. But uh, the, the internet I have is still pretty damn good, although I would like to see this exceptional again. So you show details and it shows you all the times that was pinging to, this is actually a Google server, and how quickly it's pinging back, packet loss and whatnot. So uh, there's, there's always the help, the help, you can take a tour, which also happens, my dog is bothering me right now, I think she wants to go out. Uh, <laughs> yes, dog. Okay, so um, you take the tour, this actually happens uh, when you first start using the router, it will pop up. Here are settings, you have your, your basic Wi-Fi settings. Where you have, you can put all your stuff in here, what you're going to do there. And port forwarding. Obviously, you could do all the port forwarding like uh, I had to do on Black Ops 3. I mean, there is a universal plug and play, so you generally don't have to worry about port forwarding. And it works very well. But uh, for Black Ops 3 beta on the Xbox, for some reason, their universal plug and play was not working with the game. There was something up with the game itself that you couldn't use universal plug and play, so you had to plug them in. So if that ever happens, where the ports aren't set up with the game correctly, you could always come in and add them. Uh, until the developer of that uh, game uh, sorts it out. Here's the universal plug and play that's right over there. Then you have the landline. You type in everything you gotta do over here. Most people aren't gonna really uh, use this too much to be honest with you. I have messed around with it, but for the most part the, the layman isn't gonna do these things. The miscellaneous tab. A few other things that you can do in here. Enable Wi-Fi workaround, enable cookies, that's so you save all your settings. So there's a lot of different things you can do here. It, it's a really easy router to use, and for gaming, for the host filtering, it's the host filtering. There, there's no other router that does it. There is no other router that does that. Like a lot of these other things, the, the router, other routers can do not as well and not as easy to use. But the host filtering, no other router has this. So if you really want to maximize your gaming experience, your online gaming experience, I should say, when it comes to cutting down latency, this is the best thing on the market. Um, there are some other products that I hear are pretty good too, but for people that I know that own both of them, although they liked the other product when they got this, when they used them together, but they say the NetDuma is by far the best thing. And uh, I'm not, look, here's the thing. I'm trying to give you an honest review on, not even review, just how this thing works as possible. I'm not paid by NetDuma or anything like that. Um, it's just a product that I think is one of the best things a gamer can have. And the more people that have this, honestly, the better it's going to be for everybody to game because people are going to be gaming closer together and that's the thing you want to do. You want to cut down on ping, your ping times and distances and you're going to have more time, more fun playing because there's going to be less lag for everybody. Alright guys, if you found this commentary, this commentary, you found this video helpful, please leave me a like, leave some comments if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer them for you and if you like my content and you like this video, Give me a subscription, it really helps my channel, helps me grow. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys soon. Bye! Bye.